stinky salted shiners spot tail shiners that's what you got to do when the bite gets a little bit tough and i'll show you i'm using a vmc sleek jig here it's a long shank jig quarter ounce and this is how i'm hooking these minnows i'll go through the head then out the bottom gill down the shank turn it around and go up the gut out the back so that shank of that hook is way back on that minnow like that so those finicky biters that are just kind of tail nipping the minnow they'll find the hook faster that way so this is the game plan for now we're just kind of hovering around there's a lot of like washboardy bottom out here the shale canadian shield rock just kind of goes up and down in between those valleys there's gravel or sand i can feel it on my jig you'll be bumping hard bottom and then all of a sudden it's nice kind of sandy gravelly stuff now i'm literally dragging a dead shiner on bottom barely moving it and when they bite it it's just dead weight that's why it's really important to have a rod like this 7.3 medium light the tip's fast but it's really light at the tip and the importance of that is the fish pick up the bait do not realize that there's tension on that jig right away so that gives you some time to let the fish eat it drop your rod tip back make a good hook set i got two fish on my graph right now and so what i'm going to do is the wind's blowing at me I'm gonna use the wind and my pedal system to kind of hover in one spot slowly, stay around those fish as long as possible. Got another fish on the graph right under the kayak. Now it's up to the fish to find the bait. You gotta let these things take it so long. That's a beaut. Right now I'm doing pretty good, so I laid down a little waypoint. Missed three fish in a row. I had to school myself again how long you have to let these fish take it, which is kind of fun to be honest. I have a reference point. It's pretty easy to drift, you know, even 15, 20 feet off the spot and you're literally 15, 20 feet away from the fish. So having that waypoint, and I'll say it every day of the week, so valuable for for staying on fish, especially if they're really tight like they are right now. I'm on the far end of this little extension, little hump here, and I'm getting picked up pretty good. So I'm just gonna slowly milk it, stay disciplined, let those fish eat a little bit. It's so hard to be patient. But like I said, it's pretty fun just watching that rod tip just get chewed on. Boat control in these pedal system kayaks is just so vital. I mean, especially when we're dealing with the finicky bite like not right, we are right now, like I said, just hovering on those fish, but maintaining your speed. If you're just drifting, you'd be blowing through those fish too fast. I can control the speed. Of course, I want to do what I'm basically what I'm doing is catching a drift one way, but I can use my pedal system to either slow down or speed up that drift if need be. Then I back troll, literally just like a bicycle pedaling backwards, and I can stay about 0 0.5, 0 0.7 miles an hour. The beauty of that is that my jig is on bottom the whole time, which is exactly where these fish are. They're tight to bottom right now. Basically want something to slide in front of their face. There we go. Just letting that rod tip. See how much time I can give them? I can literally lean over and and hit record on the camera before setting the hook. You just gotta give them that much time. Again, that soft rod, that'd be a good cutter right there. I think we got a couple other people in charge of dinner tonight. I'm just having fun setting the hook. But again, having that soft rod that the fish cannot detect you there, even if they're being real finicky as they are right now. These smaller minnows, I'm just kind of hooking one time so I don't mess them up too much. But I just went from 14 feet to eight feet and this is what that fish just coughed up. A little fingerling perch, young of the year perch. And so we kind of lost our wind. I'm still back trolling a little bit, really laying off the pedal system, trying to stay slow, literally going like 0.5 and less now. So I'm running down imaging, which gives me a really clear separation of the hard bottom and the fish that are just hugging bottom. You can tell if it's a rock or you can tell if there's a little separation even within inches off the bottom, just a little bit better, which is why I'm running down imaging. Here we go. This might be a little better one. Three times that fish picked it up. 
And again, if I was, if the wind was blowing any faster, had the trolling motor going or something, I would have blown off this fish and he wouldn't have gotten a third chance to eat it. Let's see if we can belly grab that one. See, that's a little bit better fish. Good cutter there. Jig right in the snoot. If you belly grab walleyes like that, they tend to just kind of go to sleep. <laughs> perfect, perfect hook set. Gave him a second to eat. All right, good one. You get snagged like that, wedged into a rock. I could feel it wasn't a fish. It was just way too stiff to be a fish. A walleye will kind of chew on it like that. And what I was gonna say is, you get stuck in a rock like that before you set the hook, you know, identify that it's not a walleye, it's likely bottom. Just back up slow and that jiggle reverse its way out of the rock, just like that. <laughs> Snared him. There's a decent one. I don't know how many seconds that was, but it took me a while to get that good hook penetration right in the nostril there. Really let him eat it. That thing chomped it. There we go. That's a nice one. Oh, okay. This one's going to require some drag. <laughs> See if we can keep this one buttoned here. That's a good one. Beautiful. Come on, baby. Oh, angry. There's a beaut. That one hammered it, you could really tell. Again, right in the nostril there. Barbless. Love that. Walleye is one of my favorite fish in the world to target. We're up here in Manitoba. Family Lake, Shining Falls Lodge. So cool.